Part two of two focuses on measuring progress and procedures for measuring the student's progress toward meeting the annual IEP goal by moving from baseline to level of attainment. For measuring progress, we need data. Data-based decisions can be made to move students from their present level um, by way of making decisions about whether to change, intensify, reduce the support or intervention that we are um, putting in place to meet the disability-related need connected to that IEP goal. Progress monitoring differs from pre-post testing. Um, testing at just one point in time to see whether the goal was met is insufficient because that would only tell us whether the student learned the skill at that end date and we need data on an ongoing basis to gauge whether the student's on pace to meet their goal. Legally, as part of the IEP, team members, including students, families, have a right to have these questions answered. What is being measured? How is it being measured? Where is the student currently functioning? And where do we want the student to be functioning? This means that IEP goals need to list specific skills, explain how that skill will be measured, and where the student is functioning upon the initial implementation of the goal, and where we expect the student's level of attainment to be 12 months out um, from that IEP date. Simply stating something like data collection is insufficient. Rather, the specific means by which data will be collected should be provided. This can include describing who will collect the data, how it will be collected, how often it will be collected, and under what circumstances it will be collected. On the goal page of the IEP document through the Department of Public Instruction, um, we can see that there are spaces that already structure your um, description of your progress monitoring procedures. So I've got a sample IEP goal page for a student in four-year-old kindergarten. I've got the space for goal statement, um, writing what the benchmark or short-term objectives are. That is applicable for students who are using essential elements on an alternate curriculum. Um, otherwise, guidance from the U.S. Department of Education suggests that those benchmark statements are not required. The expectations around that may vary by school district. Um, so you would want to check with your cooperating teachers and see whether um, students whose IEPs you are working on updating would have um, the requirement of benchmark statements. There's also a space for um, connecting to the disability related need. Those statements you wrote earlier in the document, you can copy paste verbatim. If you have a short descriptor, like there's only one literacy goal, so you're gonna just describe literacy. Um, that could be a way to simplify what you put in that number three space. Number four are the procedures for measuring the student's progress toward meeting the annual goal from baseline to level of attainment. On the draft as written here, the um, original author of this IEP said checklists and records of observation. Now we really want to be clear about the conditions under which this will occur, how the data will be collected, how often it will be collected. So a way to improve that could be to say a weekly checklist rating completed through direct observation. At the IEP meeting, we can show an example of what that checklist will look like. I'm going to show some examples here and the next several slides of different um, systems that can be put in place to measure progress on a repeated basis, like weekly, bi-weekly. The final item, number five, says when will reports of students' progress um, be provided to parents? Legally, at minimum, we need to provide those reports as often as general education peers without disabilities are provided reports, so it may be um, just concurrent to the schedule at which school report cards are disseminated. It could be more frequently than that. The minimum is as often as peers without disabilities have reports of their progress shared. So one example for gauging um, progress and allowing for data collection 
is a curriculum-based measure, or CBM. You'll learn more about these in an assessment class coming up. Um, but what this system can do is allow you to graph data under consistent standard conditions so that when you look at a student's um, rate of performance, you can see, does something need to change with instruction to better help them reach the target? In this case, we've got solid black um, circles as data points indicating the number of correct words per minute, light gray, um, solid circle data points to indicate the number of errors that the student made on these timed leveled oral reading passages. What we can see is a solid line ending in a star to show where the student's benchmark or target is um, by the end of the year. And what we can see from the data here is that the student is staying fairly level and not near the target. So through collecting this data, um, the implementer of this IEP goal would be able to see, all right, I'm not noticing enough change. Maybe something else needs to be put in place so that I can shift the direction of the student's progress um, and better help them reach the target at the end of that year. Other systems uh, frequently used as a way of collecting data could be checklists or um, task analyses even that allow us to capture a rating um, with specific skills. So this particular checklist has a dichotomous rating of a plus or minus for the um, skills that the student is working on. Every um, IEP goal that you write should have some sort of corresponding data collection sheet. This is an example of how data could be collected for um, recording responses to comprehension questions. This would simply be recording a percentage accuracy along with the level of the text the student read, what the benchmark was, and the date that that occurred. Um, another example of a data collection system is reflected here where the um, level of prompting needed is just marked on this calendar um, so that we can see how well the student is doing um, and how many prompts they're needing in order to meet the target here, which is identifying details from a story read to the student. This is kind of a nice student friendly uh, paraprofessionals can add data here, but it gives a, a quick glance as to how well the student is performing. Um, if you're interested in learning more about um, ways to measure progress, there are two sites um, listed on the slide here. One is interventioncentral.org. There are um, blank data collection sheets. There are examples of interventions that can be um, implemented to help um, keep a student on, on track for, for meeting a particular goal. The Wisconsin RTI Center also has resources that you can use for progress monitoring. Um, so those two websites I'll link on the Canvas site.